Hello everyone, welcome aboard Submarine Bakuna here at Independent Seaport Museum in Philadelphia. My name is Greg, and on today's video we've finally made it to the other end of the boat. This is the aft torpedo room. The aft torpedo room is the last compartment on the boat. The differences between it and the forward torpedo room up at the bow are minimal. The aft torpedo room has four torpedo tubes instead of six, and where the forward torpedo room has the reusable escape trunk, in the event of an emergency back aft, you'd have to flood the whole compartment in order to escape. Both torpedo rooms allow extra space for crew berthing, and both rooms possess a single head, although the one up forward is for officer use only. Because the function and description of both torpedo rooms are largely the same, we're going to spend this video talking about something we haven't yet discussed, and that's the torpedoes themselves. Bakuna carried an average of 24 torpedoes in total when she put to sea. Ten would be preloaded in the tubes, with six up forward and four back aft, ready to be used at a moment's notice. The other 14 were kept as spares on sleds, with 8 up forward and 6 back aft. It could take 12 men up to 10 minutes to reload a single tube, and it was impossible to get a spare torpedo from one end of the boat to the other. This meant that a captain and his fire control party had to be mindful of how many torpedoes they had left and where they were located when lining up for an attack. Bakuna carried a number of different torpedoes throughout her career, including the problematic Mark 14, the electric Mark 18, and the acoustic homing Mark 37. This is a Mark 14 torpedo, the most common type of torpedo used by American submarines during World War II and the early decades of the Cold War. It's 21 and a half feet long, 21 inches in diameter, and weighs a little over a ton and a half. It has an effective firing range of 4,500 yards at 46 knots, or 9,000 yards at 31 knots. It was first deployed in 1931 and remained in service until the late 70s, early 80s. The Mark 14 can be broken down into four parts the warhead, the air flask section, the afterbody, and the tail. The warhead is the business end of the torpedo. It carried an explosive charge of roughly 650 pounds of either TNT or Torpex, plus the detonator. The Mark 14 was typically equipped with either a magnetic detonator or a contact detonator. The magnetic detonator was meant to explode the torpedo when it sends the magnetic field of the hull of the target, while the contact detonator was meant to explode under impact. Both detonators had their fair share of trials and tribulations during World War II. The air flask section contains the air compartment, the water compartment, the fuel flask, and the midship section. The air compartment is located just behind the warhead and contains highly compressed air which, when mixed with water, and a fuel, in this case a blend of methanol and ethanol alcohol, creates the power needed to propel and guide the torpedo. The air compartment, water compartment, and fuel flask can together be thought of as the torpedo's boiler room. If the air flask section is the boiler room, then the afterbody section is the engine room. Attached to the forward bulkhead of the afterbody section is the combustion chamber, where air, water, and fuel mix and explode to create the gas and steam that turns the torpedo's turbine which in turn provides the motive force for the two propellers at the tail end. The afterbody section also contains the depth mechanism, which keeps the torpedo running at its set depth, and the gyroscope, which keeps it running on its set course. And finally, we have the tail section, which contains the tail blades, depth and steering rudders, and two propellers. The propellers are set to counter-rotate against each other, one clockwise and one counterclockwise. This negates the torque generated by each one, a single propeller would tend to cause the torpedo to rotate around its axis as it travels through the water, making course and depth control nearly impossible. Two propellers that are set to counter-rotate provide stability as the weapon travels to its target. Well, that does it for this video. If you enjoyed it, let us know by liking and sharing. Then head down to the comments section and leave us suggestions on what you'd like to see us cover in future videos. As always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.